If you've ever struggled with timing of audio samples and loops to your songs and the song tempo, this tutorial is for you. And we're going to take a close look at how time stretching works in Studio One from the automatic settings, manual stretching, configuring stretching and impact in Sample One, and much more. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, to begin, time stretching is simply changing the speed of an audio sample or loop without changing its pitch. When we load an audio file or sample into a sampler, for instance, the initial behavior will be that as we move up the keyboard, the sample will play back faster and, a, and we'll get a bit of the chipmunk effect. And then as we move down the keyboard, the sample is going to play back slower and the sampler, the sample literally becomes shorter or longer depending on where we're playing on the keyboard. And let's just take a quick look at that before we get into some of the other stuff here. So here I have a sample loaded into sample one, and then the original pitch here is on C3. We can tell by that little white dash up at the top. So if I go ahead and trigger at C3, running from the shadows and hiding in the hollow, this is the original pitch. Away. And then of course, and the original running speed at that pitch. Now notice if I come up to the top of the keyboard here, the playback cursor is going to move through much more quickly. Now if I play down at the bottom, our playback cursor is going much more slowly. So how can we manipulate samples to have the playback speed remain the same to match our song tempo? That's what we're going to take a look at. So let's come back to the start page. Now one of the first things that we're going to take a look at is when we create a new song, we have the option to time stretch audio files to the song tempo. And when we leave this checked, our audio files will automatically be time stretched to fit our song tempo, as long as the audio file has tempo data encoded into it. So I'm gonna cancel out of here really quickly and come back to one of the songs here. If I open up the browser and I'm gonna to come to the voice singing here, this is actually the sample I was just playing a moment ago. And we can see here down, this is where the tempo information would be if this file contained it, but it does not. We can see we have the sample rate, the bit depth. We can see that it's a WAV file and that it's 17 seconds long. Normally, if there was BPM data, it would be included in this bottom right-hand corner. Let me come to the loops tab and we have this loop that's selected and we can see 160 BPM. It's also listed in the title of the file here. So this is what I mean when I refer to the BPM data or the tempo data being encoded into the file. We can see that in the information panel of the browser, any file that you have a question about, just select it and then you'll see if it's included. So what exactly is set within Studio One when we uh, come to the create a new song and choose whether we want to stretch our audio files to the song tempo or not? So if we leave this unchecked, I'm gonna come to a song that I created by leaving that unchecked, so the no time stretch here. When we have an audio track, if I open up the inspector, the tempo is going to be set to follow. Okay, now if we do check stretch audio files to tempo, then when we come to the, our audio track in the inspector, we can see that time stretch is then set here instead of the, the follow. So that's going to be the difference between when you leave that check and when you leave it unchecked. Let's go ahead and close out the inspector. So while we're in the one that has the time stretch setting checked, let's go ahead and see what happens. We have a audio file here that is 160 BPM. If I go ahead and select that, we can see 160 BPM. If I play this back, okay, now when I bring this into our song that is set to 120 BPM, it should be altered or time stretched to fit this new time signature of 120 instead of the original 160 that it's set to. So I'm going to close out the browser and I'm going to press W to zoom out. And then I'm going to, our click track is active. Let's go ahead and play that back. Okay. 
Okay, so we can hear that that's matching up to the click track. So that is awesome. Now let's come to our no time stretch where it's set to follow. I'm going to come to the loops and this is the same file that 160 BPM file. The time stretch is not on. I'm going to drag that and place it there. I'm going to close out the inspector as well as the browser and I'm going to press W to zoom out here as well. And let's play that back. So we can hear that that's not quite matching up. And that's going to be the whole purpose of whether you want to leave that time stretch setting checked within the song page or not when you're creating your new song. Now we do have the option to manually stretch songs. So if I come to back to this one here, let's delete this one out and let's come to a file that doesn't have any BPM data encoded into it. So I'm going to come to my files and um, let's see. So this one here, it says 130 BPM here in the title, but the BPM is not actually in the file itself. So it's not encoded into there. So what if we wanted to manually stretch this? Because when we bring it in, even though we know the tempo, it's not going to be synced up. So I'll bring this in. And now I'm going to press E to zoom in. Okay, and we can see that that's not even lining up with our arrange view grid. I'm going to press P to set our loop locators there and let's activate the loop and let's play this back. Okay, so we can hear that that's not quite matching up. Now we do have the option to manually stretch this. If I hold alt on the keyboard and come to the edge of this, you'll see we get a little clock there. And then when I drag that out, we manually stretch this to fit into our song's tempo. So then when I play this back, okay, now that's matched up. Now, since the BPM is in the title, we could have set that manually. So I'm gonna control Z to undo that stretch. And then we can right click here, we have file tempo. We can see that that's not set. So we could double click there and type in 130, press enter, and then it's going to automatically stretch that as it should be to match our song tempo because it knows what BPM the original file is encoded in now that we set that in there. And we could also come to the inspector and do that. So down at the very bottom here, if I pull this up, we've got file tempo. I'm going to just control Z to undo that 130 that I put into up here. It's back to not set. So we can come here and put in 130, press enter, and we can see that that has adjusted itself. And keep in mind that we're working with the song that has the time stretch set up here within the inspector. Now I'm going to control Z one more time to get rid of the setting that I put in. Now I was using alt and coming to the edge and then stretching this, but just note that while this is going to match up to the song tempo, it doesn't put in the uh, tempo information here. So I'm going to control Z because I just want to show that we have another tool for manually setting the tempo. And this is the define tempo tool. So this one would be control and alt and hovering here then you can see our icon is a little bit different. And then when I drag this out, we can see that it's going to define the tempo based on the length that we set it to here. So you can see that it's 130. It's put that in for us. If I right click, then we can see up at the top. So I didn't add this in. When we use control and alt together and adjust this to the correct length, it's going to um, put in the correct BPM for us. Now, what would we do in a situation where the BPM data is not within the title? We have another method that we can use, and that's with the tap tempo. So I'm going to press I to close out the inspector. Let's go ahead and get rid of 
our audio file there. And for this example, I'm going to actually bring in one of my old songs. So I'm going to come to the directory here and the Quanta folder, my music, random tracks. And let's see if I can find one that doesn't have BPM data. Okay, I'm gonna bra drag this in and press W to zoom out. Let's go ahead and play that back. You can hear that the click track is off there. So I'm gonna take off the click because I don't want that to distract me. I'm gonna come to the inspector and we wanna turn the time stretch off to don't follow. Otherwise this is gonna move around and we'll never be able to find the tempo. So I'm gonna to come to the tempo here in the transport and just tap this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You could, if you work with double time, you prefer that, then you can tap double. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's coming out about 180, which is right because 90 times 2 would be 180. So now at this point, I can just right click on here and I'm going to use the 90 BPM. Go ahead and enter that in. We can see in the inspector, it's been updated here as well. So at this point, if I put our tempo at 90, press enter and play this back, I'm going to activate the click track. Let's turn up that click track just a little bit. Okay, and we can hear that that's on point. Now that I've got the tempo set, I can change the tempo at any time. And it's gonna alter the speed of the track. Let me come to the... I just wanna line this up to the beginning of a bar. I need to get it to where the beat is. Oh, okay. You know, this is a good thing for you guys to see, actually. When I found the beat, I never changed this back to time stretch. So when I changed the tempo to 120, it remained at the old speed. So that's why this is not working. So if I time stretch, now you saw that movement there. Now. Okay. So it's actually good that you guys saw that. I'll change this to 100. Okay, so you can use the tap tempo to find the tempo of a song and then add it within the menu here or using the inspector. And then once you've got that added in, you can make adjustments to the tempo to whatever you'd like, as long as you change this to time stretch, unlike I did initially, uh, and then you're good to go. Now, the last thing that we're gonna take a look at is the uh, tempo, using tempo and time stretching with impact and presence. So I'm gonna come back to the this uh, sample one here and just know that we have a follow song tempo here and this is going to automatically time stretch your sample. So the manual says that the audio file has to have BPM data encoded into it for this to work but for some reason Running from the shadows. we remember this sample from the beginning and when I come down to the bottom of the keyboard it plays really slow when I come to the top, it plays 
the playback cursor plays back really fast, but if I set to follow song tempo, running from the shadows, we've got our original. And this is playing back at the correct speed. If I come to the uh, upper end of the keyboard, Okay, so somehow this is working on a file that doesn't have BPM data, but if I was using uh, one with BPM data, perhaps it'd work a little bit tighter, a bit cleaner, I'm not sure. But um, you can see by activating here, you can time stretch your audio files automatically in sample one. And this is available in Impact XT as well. So I'm gonna come to the instruments. Let's bring in this here. Then let's come to loops. How long is this? 13 seconds. That's kind of long. Okay, now let's change our song tempo to 160. And then see, let's see what happens to this now. Oh, nothing happened to it. Let's do all notes off because we need to choose follow tempo here. Now. Okay, I'm gonna do all notes off to stop playback. Let's choose something extreme on the lower end. So 60 beats per minute, I'll press enter. Okay, so you can hear how this is adjusting based on how we change the tempo as long as you have follow tempo set within the pad controls area in the right hand side. This will be available for any pad that you choose and it works discreetly for each one. Okay, so this has been a look at how you can go about using the time stretching features within Studio One. Thanks for watching.